And as we make our way out to the balcony, wow, this game is still stunning. Oh my god! What is up, guys? It's your favorite YouTube commentator, Ghost Robo. And oh, we just woke up. Apparently, so did Commander Shepard. But besides this insane music, let me show you something more crazy. Let's get in the light here, walk us over into a brighter section. Check out this elegant, yet oh so hot, all black dress, recently acquired from the Kasumi Stolen Memory DLC. I had not played this little game I like to call Mass Effect 2 since February of 2010, but recently I got the uh, Kasumi's Stolen Memory DLC and it was so good and such a curveball that I wasn't expecting. You know, you're sort of like in a James Bond role, uh, investigating and, and stealing from this guy's mansion, that I said, hey, I want you to remember how great this game is, just like I'm remembering how great it is, and so we're going to download Shadow Broker DLC and we're going to play through it on my channel. So that's what you're getting, Shadow Broker DLC. It's supposed to be the best and the most important DLC for Mass Effect 2, so it should be a good ride. And something that grabs me and bites me in the face, as soon as I started up Mass Effect 2, uh, for the probably 50th time, actually, um, was the aesthetic. And it's not that Mass Effect 2 has the most grand or impressive graphics in the world, and it's not that Mass Effect 2 has the most, wow, this is such great art, art style, but there's something about the look of Mass Effect 2 that is just really striking, and I don't know if it's the film gram effect, or if it's just the weird and mysterious array of colors that they choose to use within the environments. But but right away, you just know this is Mass Effect 2, and nothing else really looks like it. Um, some of the little things still kind of irk me, whether it be the ship transportation or the ship movement from galaxy to galaxy, how sometimes it uses fuel, sometimes it just uses a cursor, and sometimes it doesn't use fuel. Like, it just doesn't make sense. They're all confused like a bunch of kids on Christmas when there's no presents under the tree, and it's just like, what is going on? The ship travel is just weird and the load screens are too long but here we are at one of my favorite screens in the entire game the character select screen you'll see three guys write it out and i don't know why because only jack died during my main playthrough so what the heck this krogan and tally are doing write it out i don't know maybe they're embarrassed to be here and so they're they're bright red <laughs> in humiliation if you were sitting next to me i would say good sir subscriber what should we choose who should we choose, rather, to travel with us, but you're not. So I'm going to pick Asumi, because she's brand new. I'm going to pick Miranda for a nice trio of rogue women to traverse the galaxy with. We could go through and pick some guns, but I'm sure I have the best setup. And here we are. And check this out. Shazam! Shazizzle! We've got pink armor. If that's not impressive, I don't know what is. And before we get to the main mission, I want you to take a look at the nightlife here on planet Ilium. Um, this, this, some of these vistas are just still so impressive. And it's like kind of what I expect Star Wars would be if someone with a sane mind handled episodes one, two, and three. Like if you could go back and take episode four, five, and six, that quality and make it with modern visual, uh, modern computer graphics, this is kind of what I picture it looking like. Something very serene, yet futuristic. And there's the Normandy, but we don't have time for any more space travel. We've got to go find our big blue lover from Mass Effect 1, Miss Liara. <laughs> for some reason, when I think of her name, I think of that Jay-Z song, H to the Izzo. It's like L to the Izzi, A to the Izar, A to the... It's the last letter in her name, and there's only five, so it's an odd number, and it sounds really awkward! But, oh well. Look at all the blue people. You know, if you're ever looking to see what a colony of blue people do. This is where I'd suggest going. Okay, so we read giant scrolling data screens that are moving too fast for any normal human being. What's going on over here? Apparently there's a gathering. Shh, we're spying. What are they doing over there? Looks like kind of a uh, low-res dance party. You can kind of see the character models jagging in and out of focus, but no time to lose. Um, something I, I noticed in Kasumi's lost, stolen, missing, hidden, gone memory is, is the true meaning of loyalty. And what loyalty truly means to Bioware is that you follow around your commander, even if they run in circles. Check this out. Miranda, Kasumi, let's go. And here they go. We're going to run around in circles around this little pavilion. And here they come, like the good, obedient children they are. So let's go 
I remember where her office is. Liara's office is right up the stairs. And in Mass Effect 1, I did romance Miss Liara, and it was not very exciting. I find the whole romance thing kind of goofy in both Mass Effect and Dragon Age. But Liara still is glad to see us. And so we will be very cordial and say, How are you? I like how when you pick a response, uh, it doesn't necessarily say the exact thing that's written there. It's something that Fallout New Vegas could probably do a little better. Um, granted, you're not speaking those things, but it, it directs the conversation a lot more uh, telegraphed. You know, your, your conversations are way more obvious when you know exactly what you're going to say. Um, Liara, okay, I guess she didn't want to give us any information there. I don't think the character models look that great. Like, I think there's been in games that have done it better since last January, but still, the variety of the aliens just really, really gets me excited. And I don't know what kind of kid you were, um, but when everyone else was drawing, like, dinosaurs or trucks, I was drawing aliens. And apparently Morden is on the screen, or whatever those guys are called. I don't remember any of the names. All I know is that these guys are Asari and Krogan. I remember those two. And the rest are just a bunch of crazy syllables thrust together that don't make any sense and don't really sound right. But hey, they're good alien names. And so I would draw aliens and come up with crazy names like Plaxico or, or whatever else. That's the one that I remember offhand. And I have a lot of these saved. And I look back at them and think, man, three things hit me right away. One, I was a very sucky artist as a child. And two, I am still that same very sucky artist. But three, the pictures are very amusing and very classic. I wonder how much there of a connection there is, you know, between what you drew as a kid and what kind of adult um, you ended up being. So, for example, say you drew dinosaurs. Does that lead you more down an academic path because you were interested in more of the grounded in reality fantasy of dinosaurs versus, like, aliens? Maybe that led me to video games and more fun stuff like YouTube. I don't know. Or what if you were drawing trucks? Like, you're more of an industrial guy. Not, not much for the school stuff. More, you know hitting on girls and, and running around smoking weed. I don't I don't know. You you tell me what you drew and, and what that said about you. So we're going to get this guy back. We're not going to dawdle in conversations. We're going to get right through. She needs to prepare. She's going home. All right, so Liara is going to take off now, and we're going to use her terminal for some local intel. And I also collected Pokemon cards, and so I think that's probably why I drew aliens, because sort of that whole, like, just outside of the realm of reality of you could have these little guys in little balls and you throw them and they come out and attack. I don't know. I guess that's actually really far from reality, but sort of the more fantastical aspect of aliens kind of correlates with Pokemon. Maybe drawings and collections have a little bit to do with what you like. There's no further intel available. Well, Liara, you're a true champ. Thanks for leaving us nothing to work with. I don't even want to go ride in your cab now. Miranda, what do you think? Don't run away from me. Get back here. What do you think we should do with Liara? I am frozen to the floor! And Kasumi apparently just walks into Miranda. She's so desperately attracted to her as Miranda cracks her neck. We are going to leave this office. We're going to go find a cab. Oh, this looks like a good door. Transportation. It just calls. Come into me and find a car. So we're going to go inside and do that. What if you drew, like, dolls? Or, or trolls. Remember trolls? Not trolls like I live under the bridge trolls, but trolls like the, the little toys with like crazy long hair and they were really gross and had like five fat little toes. Um, those guys are kind of creepy. Like if you're if you're a kid and you're playing with trolls, I don't know what that says about you. Or what about Cabbage Patch? Because you, you remember those cards? Like there's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know who in their right mind would buy their children something as gross and disgusting as these Cabbage Patch Kids cards. They are absolutely grotesque. The whole the whole whitewashed look of some of these Mass Effect uh, planets is, is really awesome. I wish more games used white. I really like that about Mirror's Edge. How it took a very clean and, um, what do you call it? Very, uh, very, like, sanitized approach to art style. As we approach another impressive vista, let's call the cab and get out of here. Get out of town. We're going to Liar's apartment. The cars, I never really I never really was a fan of the vehicles in Mass Effect. To me, they remind me of something that you'd get out of a cereal box and not something that you'd find in like a really cool futuristic game about aliens and space travel. Though, I do really like this loading screen. Purple and red and teal. Good color combination. Some smart artists at Bioware. But look at that car. Really, it looks like a mitten. Do I want to fly a mitten around? Don't you think they could have come up with something a little bit more flashy? 
a little bit more technologically advanced, a little bit more futuristic. All right, so now we have to pick a new team. So, Miranda, you're pissing me off by staying there. So we're going to go with my favorite Mass Effect 2 character, Thane. Thane the sad, depressed, emo alien with no eyes and Kasumi. We'll take her in her red hoodie, looking like female Altair. And now we have a pretty good team for combat. We're not going to change any more armor. So, Liara has a pretty uh, posh apartment here, and it looks like some shit went down. Because there are investigators looking at handprints and all sorts of nonsense going on. One of those Garrus kind of guys. I don't remember their names, but Thane, he still looks cool. He still got it. That armor on my guy, on my girl, I guess, doesn't look very, uh, look very, very comfortable. Whoa there. That was a little bit, uh, sensual there of her dragging her hand across the handrail. It is Telavasir. Thank you, officer. Thank you, officer. Your people are dismissed. You can't do, you can't do that! All Already done. done. I like to make voices. And I've got a little brother and I read him stories at night and, and we have a, a blast just reading the most boring stories and turning them into something crazy. I'll just improvise right away from like the middle of the story. You know, you read the flow to get them, get them just thinking it's going to be a normal story. Talk about the farm animals or the little bear who hugged his mom or whatever the story's about. And then, boom, just surprise him with some insane, crazy voice. And all of a sudden, you turn a boring story into a laugh fest. The Shadow Broker? A dangerous enemy to have. Let's investigate. Where is Liara? Where could she be? Whoa there, we got some... Got some attitude here from Televasir. They got some weird names, these Asari people, but I kind of like the purple streaks on her face. It really brings out her eyes. Clever girl, paranoid, but clever. She'd have left a note. That doesn't even make sense. Oh, Liara would have left a note. I thought they meant the killer would have left a note. I don't think Liara, if she got attacked, Commander Shepard really had time to leave a note. All right, so we're going to look for her backups. Apparently, I don't know, if you were getting robbed, what would you do? What would be your first inclination? Would you scream? Would you go and grab all your precious belongings? Would you go and grab your children? Would you repair the glass with a bullet hole hit? That's a gigantic gun. Yes, there is no way that is standard issue. What the heck made a bullet hole that's as big as my, my, my Commander Shepard? It's huge. I think that if I was being robbed, examine these rocks so we can't. If I was being robbed... What would I do? I would probably run, grab my car keys, get in my car, grab my Xbox, and leave. Because I would not want all of my saved data to be erased. And then my uh, my videos would be like, oh no, I'm starting from the beginning. Let's play Cameo. Let's play Dead Rising 1. Let's play some other crappy game from five years ago because I have no saves left. Okay, so Liara did leave a message. It has something to do with the Prothean Ruins, so we're going to look for some Prothean objects. And boom, we're standing right in front of one. I don't really like the targeting system of objects in Mass Effect 2, uh, because sometimes it gets in your way, and you like look over in the corner of a room, and you'll be like, targeting data pad, and then you won't know where it is, and so you'll have to walk over. Like here, N7 armor. Obviously, I can see that N7 armor down there, but if I couldn't, how would I know where to go? Like, like what a Prothean Relic. Let's get that one. Okay. So, so viewers, you tell me where to go. Into this wall. Let's run. Okay, good job, Commander Shepard. Uh, Prothean Relic. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Not there. Hmm. Maybe it's up on the server. Oh, it's gone. Well, let's see. Let's go down the stairs. Up. Oh, there it is. Prothean Relic. Okay. It looks like there's another one here. So let's let's decide. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm left-handed, so we're going this way. Oh, yes. Jackpot. And while she finds this ruin, we're going to take a water break. Some tasty time here. Ah, very good. Gotta keep my voice nice and fresh like that homeless guy who somehow is now the voice of, like, every radio station north of the equator and every basketball team. Like, Cleveland Cavaliers wanted to try him out. Like, what? I guess it's just the sensationalism of the media that, that has people all riled up. He does have a good voice, sure. But should he be NBA announcer? I don't know. I think you need a little bit more practice and maybe some sports education. For that my rifles look like they're really beaten up right now and I don't like it. I need like a golf club cleaner for guns to be instantly transported into Mass Effect world. She's in danger. Let's say so she did find something. And uh oh, we've got to wrap this up. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, watch out for blue people.